Hey guys, what's up? Brandon here and welcome to the lake series. The whole purpose of this lake series is to, if you're new to Tulsa or you're new to fishing or just want to know more about the lakes in the area, that's what it's designed to do. So let's get into this week's lake. All right, so this is Greenleaf Lake. It is a 930 acre lake. It is uh, southeast of Tulsa. It's about an hour and five minute drive, depending on where you're at. Um, it's actually located near Braggs, Oklahoma. So this lake, basically it's more of a river um, arm than a lake. Um, it's pretty narrow, um, but unlike my last video, this is pretty much opposite of Belkow. This is a very clean lake. So the dam and the river source, the river source um, is the, all it is is the Greenleaf Creek. Basically, if we zoom way out here, it's just a, a big arm of the Arkansas River. All this uh, Greenleaf dumps into Little Greenleaf, which dumps into the Arkansas, uh, big, big arm there. Um, and then we, if we look at the dam part of this, it's more of a spillway on this one. Um, it's kind of overflow so this is the dam and then there's just like a little overflow here that pours into over this little wall and you see this little concrete slab here dumps into a little green leaf okay so a lake breakdown um this lake is a fairly clear lake um it has a lot of hydrilla grass that grows out probably into eight foot of water or so um lily pads in some of the creeks uh, i had to jump back all the way to 2008 to get a summer picture here but as you can see in like this creek here, it's not real sharp, but um, you can see there's a lot of lily pads here on these edges. Um, a lot of matted vegetation in the summer. Um, you can kind of see some of it here. Sometimes this whole bank right here can be lined on down the bank. Just, And then it also has uh, switchgrass, um, which I took a picture of it. So that's what it was called on my picture of this app. You should get that app if you don't have it. As you get up this creek along this bank, line the bank all the way up um, into these little pockets up here. Um, but all along the bank, if it's flooded, it's usually flooded regardless. Um, for lake mapping, it is mapped. Uh, Navionics has it mapped. I have hummingbirds. Hummingbird does not have it mapped, and I'm not sure on Garmin. Um, the upper end is fairly flat and narrow, um, like a river. Uh, and, the, and the channel is pretty uh, narrow. As you can see up here, as it narrows down, like you'd have to stay, if you're going up here, you kind of have to stay along this edge here. That's where the channel is. This is all fairly shallow and flat, and there are some um, standing timber, just not very much, and it's barely sticking out of the water. So you kind of need to, once you get up into this area, kind of slow it down, because um, it gets real shallow, and there can be some stick ups, some trees and stuff. And then as you get down kind of the mid lake, um, there's some shallow flats, but most part it's pretty open, you know, stay in the channel. Um, and then as you get down towards the bottom end, this is where kind of more your deep water is in this area. I mean, it's throughout obviously in the creek channel. Um, being a river, you're gonna have flats on both sides uh, pretty much throughout the whole lake. For species, um, Pretty simple. Uh, it's got largemouth, channel catfish, crappie, white bass, and then you know a lot of brim. As for stocking report, only thing I could find uh, dating back, I went all the way back to 2015, where pretty much they started re releasing the reports online, as far as I could find. Uh, 2017 was the last they stocked the Florida strain, um, 54 of them and 18 inches long. Okay, for tournament data, I basically kind of started in the early spring, kind of midsummer, early summerish, and then late summer. Um, so only thing I could find was uh, this Greenleaf Flunker Club uh, results for March 28th. Um, there was, you know, basically that 12 pound range. Um, and then May, um, the end of May, it was kind of basically the same, 11 pounds, the 12 and 11.17, and then all the way up to 11.64, the four pound big bass. Um, and then August, uh, there was a big bag, um, 15 pound bag. But those are four fish, keep that in mind, and 13 to 9 with the big bass being about five and a half. Okay, for fishing areas, like I said, I haven't been there a whole lot, but I, it's not a very big lake, so I, I kind of ran all over it to kind of figure out what it was about. Um, you know, I was there in the wintertime, so I'm not going to see a whole lot of grass mats. I've been there once or twice in the summertime to find out where the kind of the mats are. Not a whole lot of time on the water, but from what I can give you, Here's what I know. Um, 
as we zoom in up here, you can see this is a big, pretty much shallow flat. And anytime you have shallow flat, you're going to get a lot of matted vegetation um, and lily pads in this area. So this could be a, probably a pretty good frogging area. Um, as well as in these little cuts, um, they get some of the lily pads that grow in them as well. Um, and mats, grass mats, uh, so you can, you know, kind of frog or whatever you want to do there. Um, and then on some of these points, so let's see, this one's a pretty good one. So these points stick out quite a ways, you know, it's, it's, it's not a deep, like sharp ledge point or anything like that, but it comes out a ways. And a lot of that, you know, that, that grass will grow way out there, right? Basically in the center of the lake. Um, and you can find those drops to kind of fish those, um, find the bass on the edge of the grass way out deep um, in the wintertime or in the summertime, depending on how hot it has been. Um, and then as you go up, up here, this is kind of the area where you start getting all that um, switch grass is what I call it, um, up this bank that's flooded. Um, you can flip it and it, you know, it's real shallow on this side, but there are some little islands and uh, with that uh, grass sticks out where you can probably flip that or frog that depending on the season and then it goes on up here and I think there's more of it up this way as well and then way up the river which I've never been way up there and then we jump down the lower end which I haven't really fished much it does look pretty good it's got a lot of um, you know points and humps and stuff in it but I just honestly can't speak to it because I haven't fished it very much overall this lake just it's a real pretty lake if you've never been there in the summertime real beautiful lake clear water that hydrilla that deep hydrilla as always guys thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one